Hey, yo, what is up, everybody? Coach Chad here, the CEO of the Next Level Coaching Academy. I'm nervous, yet excited to be delivering you this podcast slash YouTube episode. I don't know if you guys know this, but our mission statement at NLCA is we are striving to set the standard for excellence, both personally and professionally inside of the coaching space. We want any staff member or any client that comes through NLCA at the point in which they leave NLCA to be able to look back on their experience and say, you know what, this company made me a better person and this company made me a better professional. All right, and we're trying to do that through our example. We're trying to lead the way through our example. And, um, this podcast is going to be talking about an omission of weakness on my part and not fully embodying the standard of excellence that we want to set. So a lot of this is taking ownership, but really what we're going to be talking about is some of the dark sides of entrepreneurship. And I feel like this is a very necessary conversation because entrepreneurship has been put on a pedestal, I would say, over the past decade. And that's the problem here, right? It's a huge, huge problem. You see it a lot with other business coaches. They talk about how easy it is to be an entrepreneur, how easy it is to make money being an entrepreneur. And that just honestly isn't the truth. All right. If you guys didn't know, uh, I am 28 years old. And by the age of 28, I have done over eight figures in sales in my young professional career, which is an amazing feat. And I would say for a majority of the nine years that I've done entrepreneurship, um, it's been easier, right? I've obviously expressed and uh, experienced challenges over the past nine years of entrepreneurship, but no year has been harder for me as an entrepreneur than 2023. There's been this is this is one year where our revenue has plateaued, expenses have gone up a little bit, so profit has shrinked. There's been many of times where I've had to dip into my own savings uh, to actually make payroll. Uh, there's been partnerships that I've dissolved. Uh, many part actually two partnerships that have dissolved this year and just overall it's been a very very challenging year for me as an entrepreneur and um, I've done some things that I am not particularly proud of that I will talk about in this podcast but really what I want to talk about in this podcast is not only the hardships of entrepreneurship but the right way to respond to hardships. And um, a lot of a lot of me recording these podcasts is me talking to myself. So a lot of this is me documenting my own experience and talking about what I've learned through these experiences to hopefully help you guys avoid some of the pitfalls and the challenges and the mistakes uh, that I make as an entrepreneur. So like I said, I've amassed over eight figures in sales uh, in my young professional career, although this has been the hardest year of entrepreneurship in my young adult life, 2023. All right. And as a result of that, um, I don't personally feel like I've responded to the best of my ability. I do think that I have responded really well. And I do think that there are some things that I am very proud of uh, in terms of what how I've responded to these hardships. But there are also some areas that I don't think that I've responded very well. In 2023, this is the first year that I've struggled with my weight. Um, you guys have heard me talk about this on the podcast, but uh, I gained some weight. I did 75 hard. I lost that weight. Um, I lost a significant amount of weight prior to my wedding. Uh, since my wedding in July, I have put on the 20 pounds uh, that I lost pre-wedding. So I put that weight back on. So this is officially the first year that I've struggled with my weight. Uh, in addition to that, I would say that there, is ha there has been some moments that I've struggled with alcohol as well. Not that I'm an alcoholic, not that I have an alcohol addiction, uh, but I would say that I've used alcohol as a crutch uh, in 2023 on the weekends uh, to escape from some of the hardships that I've been faced with. And that's something I'm not proud of. And that's something that's very hard for for me to even admit and come onto this podcast and talk about because it's um, embarrassing, right? To admit weakness. But I do think I got to look beyond myself. And I do think this is something that could help some other people. There's also been times this year that I've used Adderall as a crush to push me through some of the hardships of work as well. And that is something that I am also uh, not very proud to omit, but something that I will um, happily omit to you guys if it means that 
Uh, this is going to be something that is helpful for you. All right. So that's me being very vulnerable. And that's uh, a hard thing for me to do. So I'm proud that I uh, was able to speak up on these things. But this year, once again, has been one of my hardest years. Um, as a result of that, I have gained weight. I have used alcohol as a crutch from time to time. And I've used um, uh, Adderall as a crutch from time to time as well. Now that stops. That stops today. I've had a very eye-opening experience. That eye-opening experience happened this, pa pa this past weekend. Um, I showed up in a manner that I was not proud of, something that is not my standard of excellence, something that is not NLCA's standard of excellence. And I've put my foot into the ground. I've put my stake into the ground and I've said no more. I'm not using alcohol as a crutch anymore. I'm not using Adderall as a crutch and I'm getting my weight turned around as well. And uh, hopefully this is inspiring to you guys. Uh, if you guys are going through similar hardships, I'm uh, not saying you know that you've used alcohol as a crutch or Adderall as a crutch, but if 2023 has been hard for you as well and you're finding yourself using negative things as vices to get you through, uh, this is your time, right? This is your moment to come to that omission. This is your time to say, fuck it, I'm better than this. Right. And, and I'm, 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 I have very high standards. Right. So I, even if I'm 20 pounds above where I want to be, that to me is absolutely not okay. Even if I'm using alcohol a little bit more than, than maybe I have in the past, that to me is absolutely not okay. Even if I'm using Adderall uh, at all, that to me is not okay. I do not want to have to rely on that as a crutch. Um, and yeah, once again, I want to inspire you guys to not use negative things as crutches as well. And honestly, it only makes entrepreneurship harder, right? What I've noticed, and once again, a lot of this is just me documenting my experience. What I've noticed is using alcohol as a crutch, using Adderall as a crutch is just a temporary fix, right? For, for alcohol, it's a temporary escapism of your problems. For Adderall, it's a temporary boost in energy, but really there's negative, a down, there's negative downsides to that, right? What goes up must go down. And with Adderall, it, if, you've, if you guys have ever used it, it makes you extremely productive when you do use it. But when you're off of it, it also can make you crash and feel extremely down and in some points depressed, right? So they're, they're, what, what goes up must go down. And these things that we use as temporary vices, these things that we use that we think are making our situation better are absolutely not making our situation better. And we're all aware of that, right? We're all smart. We all know that if we're using something as a negative vice, that it's at the end of the day, it's not the thing that we should be doing, but it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of balls. It takes a lot of fortitude to come to the, to come to the conclusion that you are using it as a crutch. And then two, admitting that you need to turn this around because this is weakness, not strength. And uh, I'm an individual that wants to set the example. I'm the individual that wants to inspire others. I'm the individual that wants to lead the way, and I've absolutely not been doing that. So, all right, let's get into some of the positive content here. All right, so we've talked about entrepreneurship being hard. We've talked about people using vices to get through entrepreneurship, and I used myself as an example. All right, but what should we be doing? right? Be, what should we be doing? What's actually going to get us through hard times? What's going to get us through hard times is doing more work. All right. And here's what I mean by that. Before you say, what the fuck? I don't want to do more work. More work is going to stress me out. No, it's doing more of the right work. All right. I've noticed my, I noticed something about myself. Like I said, I've done entrepreneurship now for almost a decade. All right. And the times that I have the greatest momentum, the times that I have the most energy, the times that I am the most confident in client interactions, the most confident in staff interactions, the time that I'm making the most money, the time that I am the most abundant, the time that I am the happiest, the time that I am most excited about life is when I am working on these particular things that I'm going to go through. All right, so my inspiration to you, and also I'm talking to myself here, and these are the things that I'm committing to. I'm no longer using alcohol as a crutch. I'm no longer using Adderall as a crutch. I'm no longer turning, turning hard times into more weakness, all right? I'm turning hard times into strength and setting the example on what it means to respond to hard times, all right? And here are the things that I've recognized about myself that have I do these things, my life is going to be a hell of a lot more abundant. First and foremost, that starts with sleep. All right. 
this is actually something that I've been very consistent at despite the hard times, but I am my most energized when I have a great sleep routine. That means getting starting to get ready by uh, for bed by nine o'clock. All right, so by nine o'clock, I'm off the phone, I'm off the Netflix, whatever it may be. I'm done hanging out with Caitlin. We're going to get ready for bed because we need to be asleep by 930. All right, on the receiving, on the other side of that, I like to wake up early. I operate my best when I wake up at 4.30. Wake up at 4.30, do, do a little breath work in the morning, do a little visualization in the morning, do a little goal setting, try to start my day by 5.30, all right? So wake up at 4.30, start my work day by 5.30. I am my most productive when I follow that routine of going to starting to go to bed by 9, asleep by 9.30, up at 4.30, starting work by 5.30. That's when I'm most, my most productive. All right, the other thing that I've noticed that uh, when I read books and listen to podcasts consistently, I'm also more productive during those times. Now for books, 10 pages a day has been what's manageable and achievable for me. All right, I used to use time as an excuse for reading, but 10 pages a day, if you don't have 10 minutes, one minute a page, you don't have a life. All right, you can commit to 10, 10 pages a day. In terms of podcast, uh, once again, I don't have time to, to listen to a podcast. Yes, you do. When you're making breakfast, when you're making lunch, when you're making dinner, those are all times that I have my headphones in and I'm focused on, on a podcast. I actually am one of those weirdos that doesn't listen to music at the gym. I'd rather listen to a podcast. All right, so what I've noticed is when I'm reading consistently, when I'm listening to books consistently, I am my most abundant. All right, when I do four to six workouts a week, I am my most abundant. All right, when I when I complete three needle moving tasks a day, I am my most abundant. And that requires me in the morning, and actually, sorry, I don't do this in the morning. I do this the day before, I do this in the evening. I identify what are the three needle moving tasks that I'm gonna do tomorrow that I have to get done. All right, obviously there's a bajillion other things that, that I have to do. There's probably a bajillion other things that you have to do. But what are the three things that if you get those three things done in a day, you can call that day a win. Identify those the evening before. And if you consistently show up and do those things, you're going to build the self-confidence that you can actually get shit done. All right. And I've noticed that when I am following that routine and getting those three things done, I am my best self, 100%. I am my most abundant self. All right. The next one is hydration. All right. I drink coconut water. I try to drink one a day. Um, also got regular water here as well. Uh, but I am my most abundant self when I am my most hydrated self. All right. Family and relationships. When I am tapped into my marriage, when I am tapped into talking to my mom, my dad, my brothers, I am my most abundant self. When I say tapped in, I try to call my parents at least once a week. Caitlin, I try to commit at least 90 minutes of my work week days to hang out with her. So 90 minutes every single day during the work week. And then I give uh, one devoted day on the weekend to just me and her, right? So that's 90 minutes a day, Monday through Sunday, because those are the days I work. Saturday, I take off. And that's my day that Caitlin and I are going to do whatever it is that we're going to do. All right. I'm my most abundant self when I am tracking my calories and macros. All right. For other individuals, maybe that's not your thing, right? Maybe it's just focusing on, on whole foods, right? But for me, what works for me is I'm my most abundant self when I'm tracking my calories and my macros. All right. In addition to that, um, you know, limiting or removing alcohol. All right. I have committed and made a vow to myself that I'm going to try to remove alcohol uh, from my life. I'm going to try to remove it from my life for an extended period of time. And then if I want to reintroduce it, I would reintroduce it on some holidays, uh, but really try to eliminate this as something that I, I do every single weekend, right? Dr having drinks every single weekend is not normal. Having drinks every single weekend is not something, it, 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 alcohol and success shouldn't be in the same language. All right. So I am very much committing to myself to remove alcohol from the weekends and uh, really for an extended period of time, not touching it at all. And if I want to reintroduce it, only reintroducing it on holidays and not weekends. All right. So that's the, my list. These are the things that I've noticed, and it's a simple list, but these are the things that I've noticed. If I'm on top of these things, I am my most best abundant self. Sleep, books and podcasts, four to six workouts a week, three needle movers a day, hydration, tuning in with my family and my relationships, tracking my food and focusing on nutrition and limiting alcohol. All right, y'all, we're coming to the end of this, of this podcast. We're coming to the end of this YouTube video. I hope this, I hope this was a reminder for you guys. Certainly was a great reminder for me. 
And um, once again, my goal here is to lead by example. I'm very transparent. I'm very open. I would say that's something that uh, I've worked on for a long time. And hopefully this vulnerability is something that can um, help you guys. And hopefully this was this was a podcast that motiv motivated you guys to not lean on crutches during hard times and instead to double down on working on the right things because these are the things that are going to get you through hard times, right? That list that I just went through, that's the shit that's going to get you through hard times, all right? Not alcohol, not Adderall, not any other vices that you guys may have. That shit ain't getting you through hard times. That's a temporary relief, right? But all that other shit that I talked about, that's going to give you the confidence, that's going to give you the discipline, and that's going to give you the energy to actually get through hard times. That's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.